Clive brings up a really interesting point about the problems of the diagnosis of malaria because it often presents with symptoms that could be something else, kind of like COVID today. But Clive has been the director of the Johns Hopkins uh, Malaria Center in Zambia, and he was really a pioneer, the pioneer, in uh, a, developing a new diagnostic technique called rapid um, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, would you say a little bit about that, Clive? You, this, <laughs> this is the man. <laughs> I had moved to the United States and I was working on malaria. And a student came to me and she said, um, she works for a, 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 a diagnostic company and they have a test, a rapid diagnostic test for malaria. So I said, I really don't believe that, but it was actually developed in Baltimore in, in a lab very close to where I lived. So I visited the lab and it was demonstrated to me and I thought this is absolutely wonderful. So they gave, at that stage, I was working in, uh, in Bagamoyo in, um, in Tanzania. So they gave me a, 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 a carton of this test. We were, took it into the field and we tested people and literally within 10 minutes of taking a, a finger prick of blood, you could have a positive diagnosis or a negative diagnosis. And I think that this was actually the biggest step, the most important step. And um, I, I remember defending this concept in, in meetings in various parts of the world um, that I felt that this should be done and that it should be developed um, and my colleagues in the field also felt that this, but it took about 20 years uh, before it became available. And so, beginning in the 21st century, um, the, 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 uh, the distribution of the rapid diagnostic test was extensive. It's still to me uh, the most important um, diagnostic we've got because even with PCR and that, you can't get an, a, a reading in, in the clinic um, immediately. I have personal experience with Clive's <laughs> testing. So I got dengue a few years back after uh -oh. coming back from Cameroon, and I was lucky that Clive brought me into his office and tested me right there to make sure I didn't have malaria. <laughs> but also, the, I wanted to, as a scientist myself, I wanted to highlight how amazing to have this test is because when you're in the field in Africa and trying to do diagnostics, um, here there aren't many problems with doing a simple uh, PCR test. We polymerase chain reaction. It's a little machine that you put on top of your desk. Um, it runs within a couple of hours. You get results. It's very easy, you know, here in the States. If you go to these little villages um, in parts of Africa, for example, where um, I've done some field work, you are often experiencing power outages. The ranges in temperature varies a lot, which really impacts your tests. You also have to be able to train technicians to be able to run these tests. Um, um, and you also have to be able to pay them to be able to come in and do it. And sometimes the volume of tests coming into the clinic it's just so large you can't keep up with the scale that's happening. Um, so it's actually a really big barrier to understand the full burden of the disease when you can't even just test for it. So now that there's available, you know, just a little stick, just like the COVID test that we have now, um, where you put a little drop of blood or anything on it, um, there are also people who are trying to develop saliva tests um, to make it even easier that you just spit on something to see if you have it. That's in development, but you know, it's getting easier and easier to, to look for this stuff um, um, right on the spot. So it's, it's really revol revolutionizing data collection and being able to know the right treatment. Mm.